but uh, yeah, I feel great. It's unbelievable that it's been three years. I'm Zach. I am one of the founding engineers here at Petri. Uh, and I was also one of the earliest engineers on uh, the Istio project back at Google. Hey, my name is Lensa. I'm a senior technical staff member with IBM. I've been working on the Istio project for almost three years, probably two years and 11 months. Hi, I'm Lizan. Um, I'm a founding engineer at Tetris. Um, I lead the uh, Istio network, uh, networking working group and security working group. Um, as well as uh, as a senior maintainer of Envoy. My name is Mandar Zo, and I've been working on Istio for almost four years now. Hi, my name is Sriram. I am one of the engineers here at Tetrate. I also was the founder of the Istio Service Mesh project when back at IBM Research. I'm Sven Mawson. I'm one of the uh, founders, actually, of Istio. I'm one of the original members of the team. Within the Google team, we had learned um, how to run distributed systems and microservices in an easy way. We had seen the impact of that architecture and what it gives for developer agility at Google and operator agility to make fleet-wide changes. So we wanted to bring that uh, to both the Kubernetes community, Google Cloud and industry at large. Our goal was to power the world services, uh, which is a very grand and lofty goal, which was also exciting. Well, IBM donated on the Amalgamate project. Before Istio, we had a, a different project called Amalgamate, which had a similar design, just that there was a control plane and a data plane full of layer 7 proxies, and the control plane was exposing a bunch of APIs. And you know, when we met the Google folks, they actually had the other half of the entire equation, which was like, you know, observability and security. And along the same time, curiously, both of these projects had actually narrowed down on Envoy as uh, the data plane implementation. And then we decided to join forces, build the entire thing out together, and thus came these two service mesh. And so kind of pre-paternity leave, I handed everything off that I was working on, so I came back and was like, all right, what's next? All right, so what, what do I want to work on next? Um, and this jumped out at me as kind of like the thing I wanted to work on. So one, we, we used to sit right next to Kubernetes community, uh, the, the team, sorry, uh, at Google. And uh, we had seen um, how they were growing as a community. Uh, so we were really excited about that and wanted to actually uh, double down on that and leverage that community base. Second, it was a very large surface area for the project. Um, and we knew like, if we bring community and industry along, it will foster and grow much faster. Project I had done uh, GRPC where I had seen personally seen success and it was, uh, it was a no brainer to go open source. There was no motivation for keeping it proprietary. We wanted this to be accessible to everybody and, and hence the open source. Where it's like, hey, rather than us building our own thing, and even if we do a really good job eventually getting past, let's just build it all together with the community and everyone. Great thing about uh, any good vision is that it stands the test of time. And, uh, you know, it's good looking back uh, at three years that the vision has not changed. Um, the, it's a platform to connect, secure, observe, and control services in any environment. Still mm -hmm. holds true. While we had these grand ambitions, some of the things we were ambitious about changed out from under us. So, you know, like we were, uh, we actually wanted to spend a lot of time making Cloud Foundry work because at the time Cloud Foundry was still um, pretty big. And while it still is, it's kind of like even Cloud Foundry is switching to Kubernetes. And so we haven't, there's some areas we just haven't needed to invest in, um, but there's some we just haven't yet gotten to. Um, and I think those are still valid. But generally this model of make a distributed systems easier, that, that vision hasn't changed. The problem space and the technology we are using. So Envoy as the data plane, uh, which we see, continue to see uh, different use cases from customers, um, as well as on the, from Istio side, 
um, those are really interesting problems. Tons of interest from our users on the project and service mesh in general. That's one of the primary reasons that keep me motivated on the project. Istio has gathered a large community now and I can see that it makes a real difference uh, to our users and their businesses. Uh, so the ability to affect so many users is what keeps me motivated. It's a, it's a phenomenal community that has grown up around Istio itself. Not just that initial group that I joined to, to work with, but uh, you know, as the community has grown and as uh, you know, IBM came in, uh, and the folks at, at Red Hat and at Cisco and at places like uh, Aspen and Solo, for example. Uh, the fact that we all get to work together and that we all have this common interest and, and that we can uh, have these meetings. And so seeing usage explode is very, uh, is very gratifying, right? It's, it's super cool to, to help create a project that, that solves the needs very clearly. I would say um, to existing ones, be more welcoming to new contributions figure out ways to get more people to contribute in each of the working areas um, because you know that's the only way to uh, grow your contributor ecosystem. I thank all the contributors to Istio because without your contributions this project would not have reached the scale that it is today contributions no matter how big or small. A lot of users actually didn't know what Slack is completely open so anybody can request to join Slack without any contribution. You can always start small um, from the um, specific area that you are particularly interested in. There are many areas that are still underserved or that still need to be explored so Pick an area of Istio that you like and start with, with small contributions. If you're coming in and you don't know anyone on the project, you're not already kind of plugged into the community in some way, talk with the person that created the issue, that filed it, that has been shepherding it about the approach. Uh, and you're going to have a very, you're going to have a much better experience trying to contribute. First, build a community and, you know, make sure there's a good feedback cycle from the community and keep the community engaged. Next, pay attention to APIs. Don't like you know, keep the API surface small, modular, and composable. Pay attention to backward compatibility and incremental migration. Instead, I think over the next two years, what I what Istio should continue to do is what it's really done over this past year: make it easier to use, make it less configuration, uh, make uh, more of the knobs intelligent so that you, the users don't have to fiddle with them. Uh, do those things that make the project adoptable and robust and easy to run in, in a variety of environments, more than just Kubernetes. User to continue to be able to move their services to the mesh and be able to enjoy the benefit of the mesh without any disruption. So users should be able to continue move their services in and out of the mesh. If they choose to move in, you know, they can see the value of the mesh. And then if they choose to be out of the mesh because of the cost of the cycle, because of the maintenance of the control plane, they should be able to do so freely. So we want to be able to enumerate the surprises um, for a user and really make it Istio boring so that they don't have to, you know, open GitHub issue and jump on Slack and ask us for help. They can just figure things out for a user. I definitely want to see more adoption from uh, different customers, different organizations. Um, from the technology side, this, um, there are some um, new features that I'm really excited about is WebAssembly and the uh, federation which allows the basically it allows more um, customized adoption to different uh, customers so, uh, i think istio will have many many more users and uh, my completely biased view but it will be the default service mesh uh, mm -hmm. everywhere i also expect that google and other cloud vendors will have like big established products in the area based around this deal. I think we'll have, you know, official support for, um, for mobile and for, you know, edge and maybe some guides for these things. The extensibility story will have uh, taken off. So as I was mentioning, we did this big shift away from Mixer towards WebAssembly. 
I think in two years from now, that will really have solidified. I would say to end users is um, think about separation of duties. Uh, who does what? Uh, try to include it um, as a layer such that application developers get the benefit of it, but not the complexity of it. I would like to thank all the end users for adopting the project, using it in your infrastructure, for managing the services, giving us constant feedback, and your continued support. I would recommend them to adopt Istio at one feature at a time. Thanks for using Istio and try out and reporting the issue to us. Uh, we are very um, we are happy to help with any uh, your um, issue you faced with Istio. So please share your use case and uh, problem you faced. Hey, just talk to us. Uh, we would love to know that you're using it. One of the interesting things about having an open source project is we don't really know who uses it and who doesn't. So we're always curious to hear about your use cases. Such thing. Adopt Istio because you need encryption in transit. Adopt Istio because you need observability across your services. You know, adopt it because you need fine-grained traffic control to be able to do safe rollouts. But don't adopt it because everybody is adopting a service mesh, and I think that I want those things down the line. Yeah, we've made huge, huge strides on simplifying Istio and making it easier to operate, and I'd suggest, yeah, people should try it out. The project grows and thrives because of you, right? That the project is here because of our users. Uh, we take this responsibility very seriously. We have learned many lessons along the way about upgradability, ease of use and all that. And we are taking that to heart and we're gradually making it better and better. It is really shaping up to be a community and that actually was not always the way, right? The early days were not like that at all. Um, and so it really feels like a, a, a open source community first and not like run by a particular company. That's, that's actually, yeah, very exciting for me. At the most recent KubeCon, there was a lot of presence, that there was a lot of Istio presence. There were many talks about, about Istio. Uh, and in fact, what I remember clearly is that someone not even coming to talk to me, but I was in the vicinity of someone and people were having discussion. And these people who were not part of, directly part of the Istio community were actually explaining to each other why they need Istio. And that was even more powerful because it means that uh, no direct member of the Istio team or the Istio community needed to explain it now. It was it was kind of general knowledge in KubeCon that's, that yes, you do need, you do need service mesh and uh, Istio is one of the prominent service meshes.